Hello, welcome back. It's been quite a while, uh, and so before we get into the main portion of this video, which is me unboxing my brand new sewing machine, I just wanted to give you a little update as to where I am, because I appreciate it's been quite a while since you've heard anything from me. So many of you may know that at the end of January, I got COVID, which was awful in itself, but it also resulted in some, I won't lie, really quite serious consequences for me and my health with my underlying conditions and so I have been very seriously ill. Uh, interestingly I got better and then I got worse again and so the footage you're about to see was filmed at the end of February when I was thought I was out of the woods. Hmm, yeah, no, not quite. So as a result I have been really AWOL I guess from YouTube and Instagram. I haven't checked comments, I haven't read messages for months now at this point, probably three months by the time you see this. So I just wanted to reassure you, it's uh, it's not anything other than the fact that I've just been ill in bed for a very long time. That is all I'm willing to say on the subject, so please don't ask me to elaborate because I simply won't. Um, I do really appreciate all your kind wishes and messages and things. Every now and again I do check my Instagram inbox and um, I've had quite a few very kind messages from people over there and in the comments and things here and on the community tab So I do really appreciate all those kind words They really mean a lot to me and you know help me keep my chin up and everything like that So I but I wanted to do this introduction because I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm Filming this today April 10th something like that. I am doing better uh, Slowly but surely I am doing better. I'm a lot better than the footage you're about to see, so I do warn you I look very rough in this footage. Um, <laughs> um, but I um, I was so excited to get this new machine because of course I couldn't have done it without all of you wonderful viewers. So um, I still wanted to make this video and put this video out because uh, I owe you so much, really. And um, you will be pleased to know that I have, I've got my new machine here, and it has got a work in progress project on it that will hopefully be coming to this channel soon. So I am well enough to be back sewing, which has done wonders for everything else in my life, and I'm really looking forward to getting back to YouTube as well. So that's all from me for now, and we'll get into the main portion of the video and you can see my brand new Benina sewing machine. So it's been a really long time. Uh, <laughs> today is the first day since I caught Covid on the 22nd of January, that I feel anything remotely like my usual self, uh, which of course, as we know, is not the same as an ordinary human, but uh, I finally feel not like I'm dying, basically. And uh, that's very serendipitous because it just so happens that today my brand new sewing machine was ready for collection so I've been out to get it so I should probably tell you about what's happened with my sewing machine. Let's start right at the beginning. The Benina sewing machine that I use most frequently in my videos here on YouTube that you've seen uh, is a Benina Activa 220 originally from 2005 and I bought it secondhand off my school in 2009, I think, for the grand sum of £75. Now that machine has seen me through an awful lot of professional work, a lot of exams, a lot of qualifications, and of course it was the machine I've used here on YouTube. However, that type of machine had a known circuit board issue, and after I'd bought it second hand, I had to spend quite a lot of money replacing one of the circuit boards in it. And uh, so I probably spent, over the years, have spent already a lot of money, maybe £500, refurbishing, keeping that machine ticking over. And then last year, the end of last year, actually it was probably summer last year, <laughs> god it's been so long, this same circuit board issue, which I'd previously had replaced, started to happen again. And so I took the machine in for repair, the engineer said everything seemed fine, he couldn't find the fault, and I mean I trust his judgement, but it still kept happening, and so I took it back again at the beginning of January because I thought, well, I'll just change the circuit board and see what happens. He still couldn't find the fault with this damn machine, <laughs> and he said, so that means, essentially, you could spend 
a lot of money, possibly 250, 300, 400 pounds, depending on what the issue is, fixing this machine or trying to fix this machine, changing the circuit board, and it wouldn't actually solve your issue. It might be a different issue entirely. So then I had a decision to make about do I spend a chunk of money potentially trying to refurbish that machine, which I know has a known fault, which I bought secondhand off my school anyway, and is 15 years old, or do I fork out some extra cash and buy a brand new machine? From the presence of this enormous box next to me, you've probably figured out what I went for. And my motivation for doing this was because this type of machine that I've bought has extra accessibility features. And that was one of the ways I justified it to myself. I also wish to point out the reason I'm making this video, even though I still don't feel very well, is because I, this would not have been possible without your support, uh, both here on YouTube and over particularly on Coffee, on Ko-Fi, whatever you call it, I don't know. Your financial support has enabled me to buy a new machine. And uh, I am incredibly grateful, I cannot tell you, because my sewing machine is my entire livelihood. It is how I survive on this planet. So when it's not working, it's scary for me, I must admit. And I do have a backup sewing machine, and which I have been using for months now. But with any cheap sewing machine, the issue is they're just not built to last. You also don't have the features and the functions of a more expensive sewing machine. So I'm making this video uh, to say thank you, basically, to let you know, firstly, I'm all right, I'm not dead yet. Second of all, I am incredibly grateful for all your support. I really, I can't talk about it too much because I'll get emotional, but it, it means so much to me and I am so thrilled that I can share this with you now. Is that enough talking? Should we open it up? Hopefully I have the strength to lift this out of the box. So. So one of the things, the, I bought this off my sewing machine engineer, who's a registered Benina engineer, and he said to me, one of the things you have to do is you have to keep all the original packaging, because if there's anything wrong with it, Benina won't take it back. So holding on to all the bits. So first of all, I have a mammoth, look at that, uh, instruction leaflet. Okay, let's put that to one side for now. Oh good, polystyrene. Let's see. So power cable. Let's see this. This was what I paid extra money for. <laughs> this is, if you don't know what this is, this is uh, a knee lift. So ooh, yeah, like this. So it means you can control the presser foot with your knee. Very excited about having one of these. They're mostly used on industrial sewing machines. And so I have worked with industrial sewing machines in the past and uh, I love a knee lift. And the fact that you can convert some machines to have a knee lift, but this one comes up, comes already set up. You just have to buy this bit, you know. And so the other reason I spent a lot of money on this machine uh, rather than get my other one fixed is because I've been wanting one of these, which is uh, a Benina buttonhole foot for ages, an automatic buttonhole foot, I should say. Um, this bit costs £105. So yeah, it comes included with this this one. <laughs> okay, so those are all the little bits out. Let's see. Oh God, oh God, standing up. Can I take this layer of polystyrene off first? Yes, I can. <gasps> oh my God, this is so exciting. I think what I'm going to have to do is take all the little bits out first and then put this box on the floor when it's a bit lighter and lift the machine itself out. So, um, I have no idea what this is. Pedal. Brilliant. rest of the accessories. Is this just silica? Yeah, 
looks like it. So I better keep that. Um, another layer of packing. More accessories. This looks like the cover. Ugh. Tray table. This is one of the things, the tray table, that if um, you want to level up your sewing, I really recommend as a gadget because having, it essentially makes it a bit more like an industrial, so you have a really flat surface. Having one of these, I think, is game changing. I'm not strong enough. Okay. about the same weight as my other one in there. I think it's fractionally heavier actually. <gasps> Look at it. it! It's really similar actually, isn't it? Ta-da! It's my new Benina. So it's a B335 and the next model down is £150 cheaper, 325 but you, you don't get the buttonhole foot or the, um, the system, you don't get this part as standard with this one. Um, you have to buy this extra, but it's set up ready to go. Whereas if you buy the next model down, it has to be converted, I believe. I'm not an expert, I'm just an enthusiast. Another reason why I went for this machine is because uh, the engineer said it's really similar to the one I already have, the Activa 220. So I should get on with it just fine, is what he said. Whether that's the reality, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, look at the little... Ah! So thread cutter, oh, okay. Yep, front loading bobbin. That's was a bad idea, wasn't it? Oh, I've got a snipper there, yes, genius. Um, I need to take that label off already, don't I? That is the wrong lever. Oh, fully threaded bobbin. That's nice of them. Should we have a play? Shall I set it up and come back to you? So I've, I've read the manual thoroughly. I'm that sort of person. And it is almost identical. When I say almost identical, basically exactly the same as the manual for my other Benina. Everything looks pretty straightforward. The only things I'm curious about trying, which I haven't read instructions for, are this machine has a start stop button, which I've never used before. I was hoping it had an automatic thread cutter, but it doesn't. But honestly, this machine is covered in thread cutters. So, oh well. I'm desperate to give this a try, but I thought I would switch the camera back on for the moment, I've just plugged it in. So let's switch it on and see if it works. <laughs> moment of truth. Well, it makes a different noise to my Vanina. Let's hope that's right. Uh, I suppose I should thread it up. It came with these threads, so let's use one of these. I should also get some scrap fabric. Why am I so bad at YouTube? Ah. So I've taken this jewelry out already of the kit. So um, probably actually need to go on that way. <laughs> Hello. I'm really not strong at the minute. I can't even. <laughs> there we are. Those tension discs, ah, oh, that glides beautifully. Okay, probably gonna have to trim this because otherwise I'm not gonna get it through. Oh, I should put this back on. So shiny. The only thing that's bugging me, which I hadn't considered. Oh, it's got centimeters at the back here. Okay, good. So I don't know if you can see this. So I hope you can see this. It's got imperial measurements, Switzerland. I expected better from you. It does have the metric ones at the back. Okay, I'll live with it. Ignore the mess down here. Can you see this? You watch here? 
<gasps> the joy, the absolute joy. Right. I've got some scrap fabric. Oh, hang on. This is a terrible shot. The issue is I can't, because I've got a low table, I can't get me and the machine in shot very easily. Um, but yes, here we are. I have some scrap fabric. Let's use my knee lift. <gasps> I don't need to do that. What? Look at that. Ah! <laughs> this is so cool. Okay. So if I press my start stop button, what happens? It goes like that. Look at that. So how do I get it to stop? I just press it. And then I press reverse. Can I do can I reverse with the start stop button? I haven't even plugged in the foot pedal. This is insane. So if I hold, if I press that one and that one, does it go backwards? <gasps> it does. Oh! oh my god. <laughs> it goes very slowly. Is this speed? Can I make it go faster? <gasps> that was a bit fast, I think. Still a bit fast. Oh, I don't need to touch it. I could do it like this. Ah! <laughs> oh, look at that. My first line of stitching on my new sewing machine. What, what a beauty, what a beauty. Uh, I'm gonna try doing a curve. Let's draw on a curve. Let's do quite a sharp curve. Let's see if I can't. Use my knee lift. Ah! The f I tell you, the first time I was in a workroom and I had to use an industrial machine with a knee lift, I went to the machine and there was no lever at all. And I sat looking at the machine for ages like I don't know what to do and I sat there so confused I was too embarrassed to ask about the industrial machine because all the other industrials I'd used had a had a, um, a lever and then finally I was like that's what this is that's what the thing with your knee is oh, I felt like such a fool right so let's turn it right down I press the reverse button So this is the brilliant thing about having a knee lift is I'm not quite got the hang of this. Tight corners like this. Yeah. Because the feed dog goes as well. But what I could do is do a stop. Oh, I'd need to. Hmm. And then do like, like that. <gasps> Who needs a presser foot? Who needs a presser foot? Let's get rid of them. Why use your legs at all in sewing, quite frankly? How do I get it to, I suppose I can hand crank it, can't I? And then I can have to do it when I can use my leg. Ah! <laughs> so you can see, my stitching isn't perfect around this curve, but you can imagine if that was a tab on a, a, a set of 18th century stays or something. Banging, 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 banging. Let's use this buttonhole foot. So of course, fiddling about with anything under here, it's best to switch it off. And this, uh, uh, it's really unusual. Do I have to take that plastic bit off? I don't think so. So, I'm using my knee lift here again, taking the whole shank off and installing this bad boy instead. Is that on? Yes, that is on. Right, so. 
I need the light back on. I'm not entirely sure how I work this. Oh, let me check the instructions. So I should have worn my glasses really. The lens on buttonhole foot with number 3A automatically registers the length of the buttonhole for exact duplication. The active step blinks on the screen. Okay, when you may, when any automatic buttonhole is selected, press foot number three is indicated on the screen. Right, so I need to select the program. So is the program zero? Or is that a different sort of buttonhole? Let me, came with one of these with all the different stitches on. So it looks like zero, yeah. Yeah, press foot number three. This is confusing. So the first bead forward, stop the sewing computer, press the quick reverse button, auto, and the press of fit number three appear on the display, button hole length is programmed. Okay, let's give it a go then. Um, again, let's chalk, we mustn't lose that bit. Let's chalk on a line for the sake of making this easy on myself. Make it quite big. Right, you ready? So what do I do with these threads? Okay, that was bad. Rookie error there. See, my old one had recommendations for tension and this doesn't. Why can't it? This is like jammed. Maybe it's supposed to be this tight and my old machine was just <laughs> playing up. It was just old, worn out. All right, let's try thread up again. We are at least running through now. Okay, let's reset everything. I'll hold on to my threads this time like a good seamstress who knows what they're doing. Okay, let's turn the speed up a little. So that's the first one. Very nice. Will it remember? That's what I'm curious about. If I do another, will it be exactly the same size? <gasps> Look at that. my knee lifter <gasps> look look at that two perfect exactly the same buttonholes bang in well would you look at that all that sewing and I haven't even unwrapped the presser foot yet I'm really excited I'm so excited about my new machine <laughs> Oh, it's just, oh, it's been so tough being so ill and not being able to sew anything. And like, I've been completely, I've completely lost motivation not being able to use my nice machine. I mean, the, the brother one's fine, but the, the noise it makes is really annoying. And this one's so quiet. Oh, I'm, get, I'm really getting tired now, so I need to go. So I will just say once again, thank you so much 
this absolutely would not have been possible without you. You bought this. You paid for this. Whether you donated to my coffee or not, you watching my videos, being here, supporting me on my channel, paid for this machine. So I'm really looking forward to getting back in here, back to work and making things for you again with this. I cannot thank you enough. It is a pleasure and a privilege to do this. Absolutely. And uh, I am so grateful. <laughs> I apologise if this is a bit of a rough cut video. Not much effort put into it. It's not really about the cinematic quality of it, really, is it? It's about communicating with you for the first time in a long time. So I hope you will forgive that. And uh, I've got some things stored up that should be coming soon old projects that just need editing and I've got a lot of sewing plans coming as well. I just have to wait for the strength to be able to actually do them. But oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. That's enough, I think. Did I mention how grateful I am? Good. All that's left to say then is thank you so very much for watching.